Hello and welcome to the PTV VSIM tutorial how to use the Kappa Creator. In this tutorial I show you how to easily model angled and perpendicular parking spaces with PTV VSIM. I've prepared three examples for you. First, angled parking on one side of a road. Second, a car park with spaces on both sides. And third, an extension of this car park which is accessible from one side only. So let's start. We want to have some angled parking on the right hand side of this road. To enter the car park creator, click the parking icon in the network action toolbar. Then click inside the link where the car park starts and click another time at the location where it ends. A flyout dialog shows the settings of the car park creator. Here you define that the parking spaces should appear only on the right hand side. Now define the angle by dragging the outer edge of the first parking space and drag the space length as required. All spaces of one side share the same length and angle. If you prefer providing the exact values, you can do so too. With spacing, you can add an offset between the spaces. Before closing the car park creator, define the percentage of the vehicles that should park here along with their park time distribution. We use a very short park duration so that you can see more vehicle movements. Now confirm all settings and watch what happens. All the required network objects were generated. These are links, connectors, parking lots, reduced speed areas and parking routes. For the car park to function, it is essential that routes are defined correctly. First, move the generated parking routing decision well upstream of the first parking space. Then make sure that the parking routing decision and the entire car park are enclosed by a static route. Now get ready to watch the simulation. You will notice that vehicles react to one another, although there is no explicit definition of any priority rule or conflict area. This is all done automatically by VSIM during the simulation. The next example is a car park where perpendicular parking is possible on both sides. In the car park creator, click inside the drive aisle to define start and end of the parking spaces to be generated. Adjust the start of the parking spaces. Then, before the first tree, adjust the alignment by changing the space width. All spaces of one side share the same width. Press the X symbol to define a gap where the tree is. The width of each gap can be adjusted individually. Now do the same for the opposite side. Finally, on the lower part, adjust the space length slightly. The upper part is fine already, as here the spaces partly overlap with the green. By default, both rows of spaces can be reached by vehicles entering from either side of the car park. While in this example vehicles can leave the car park in both directions, they can enter from the left only. So, for this side, no connections into parking spaces are needed. This is done by disabling the accessibility for both rows. Define the percentage of vehicles that should park here along with their park duration. Confirm all settings. All the network objects are generated. Don't forget to move the routing decision. VSIM detects that for the new location an adaption of the parking routes is required. 
we let Visim autocomplete the routes by choosing Yes to All. Now start the simulation and watch. Vehicles now enter the car park and the parking routing decision currently affects vehicles arriving from the left only. We will change this after the next example so that also vehicles from the opposite direction will enter the car park. Let's complete this car park by generating the spaces of the lower part. You can see that currently there is no Visim link defined for the drive aisle here, only the background image is visible. The car park creator can not only generate the parking spaces, but also the drive aisle that connects them. In the car park creator, use control plus mouse drag, just as you would do to create a new link. Now, you can adjust the aisle link to match its location with the background. Add the opposite direction. As before, adjust the location and dimensions of the parking spaces. There is no entry or exit to the right of the car park. Define this closure by setting the markers outside the drive aisle to dead end. Most drivers want to park close to their destination. In Visim this is modeled with the attraction value. The higher the attraction, the more preferred is the parking space. To understand which attributes of the car park creator belong to which side of the parking spaces, imagine the drive aisle of the main direction running in between the columns from bottom to top. For left-hand traffic, the arrow would reach from top to bottom. So, the left column holds the attraction for the upper row of spaces. The last space is the most attractive one, so enter 12 for attraction last. For the other side, this is 8. And for both sides, the attraction of the first space is 1. We've chosen the range from 1 to 12 and 1 to 8 to get an integer attraction value for each parking space. However, this is not compulsory. Before we finish, ensure to deal with the routing. From before, there is already a parking routing decision defined. So instead of creating another one, select the existing routing decision. But wait a minute. There is no connection yet between the drive aisle generated by the car park creator and the remaining network. So how will the routing work? Well, as you confirm the car park creator, you will get a warning that the parking routes cannot be completed. This is okay as long as you continue with defining the connectors and then let Visim fix the routes. So connect the drive aisles and then use check network to complete the interrupted routes. This is done by selecting all messages regarding incomplete routes and choose fix from the context menu. Visim automatically completes the parking routes. Let's start the simulation and watch the parking vehicles. You notice that the lower part is filled first. As the last action in this tutorial, we also want vehicles from the opposite direction to park. Therefore, Duplicate the routing decision and move it to the link for the opposite direction. Ensure to move it upstream of the car park exit to avoid that exiting vehicles will enter the car park again. Confirm the automatic route completion. Toggle to wireframe mode to double check that the routing decision is upstream of the connector exiting from the car park. 
increase the parking duration so that we see vehicles parking in both parts of the car park. Now the car park is used by vehicles from both directions. The lower part of the car park is filled first, one space after another. Once the lower part is full, vehicles start parking in the upper part and choose their space randomly. This is because of the way we defined the attraction values. Each parking space in the upper part shares the same value and this is lower than all attraction values of the lower part. As soon as a space in the lower part becomes available, it is assigned to the next vehicle crossing one of the parking routing decisions. Finally, let's watch the car park in 3D mode. We've already prepared a network layout for it. So, we've successfully finished the car park. You're ready now to continue using the PTV Visim Car Park Creator in your own projects. Thanks for watching. Thank you.